Hey guys, welcome to another favorites episode where I share with you what I've been into this past month. And it is now August 2020 and I cannot believe it. Where, where did the summer go? Since I last shared what I've been into, I have yet been into more fun and exciting things, which I hope you are here for. So <laughs> gather around, grab a cup of something and, and let's chat about them, shall we? All right, let's start with knitting. This is a pattern that has actually not been released yet, but as soon as I saw it pop up on my Instagram feed, I was like, let me gather the yarn for that because that is getting cast on. I know, I know I don't need to cast on any new patterns. I really need to finish a lot of things, but it's definitely on my list of patterns that I wanna cast on immediately. And that is the Miserina Tea by Caitlin Hunter or Boylan Knitworks. I believe it is going to be published on August 6th, which is probably a day away from when this episode is going to get published. But yes, it's a beautiful pattern, and of course I am a diehard fan of everything, anything that Caitlin Hunter designs, and I am I am here for it. So definitely check that pattern out. Again, I'm trying really hard not to browse Ravelry or my Instagram feed for new patterns to cast on because I am very easily tempted, very easily swayed, and I like to cast new things on like nobody's business. So I'm trying to be good, but I have a funny feeling I'm going to pull the trigger on the my Zerina pullover once it's released. I know, I know. As you know, I am obsessed with all things Victorian, Edwardian, and I love me a good walking skirt. And there are quite a few patterns out there for walking skirts. I've made a walking skirt, a couple actually. I've made the Scroop patterns, a fantail walking skirt. She has a maxi length and a knee length version, uh, which I've made, love that pattern to death. Um, I've also made the Truly Victorian walking skirt. And then Folkwear Patterns uh, also has a walking skirt pattern, which has just been released. I caught wind of it on thefoldline.com, but they just released a PDF version of their walking skirt. So I am I'm so excited for that. I feel like the walking skirt can be so versatile. You can have so much fun with it, kind of like your average circle skirt or gathered skirt. You can do so much with it, be it with fabric or embellishments and, and the like, and just customizing it to your own fancy, so to speak. So I, I was really excited to see that they released that pattern as a PDF and I may just jump on that bandwagon and see what it's all about. For example, while there are many different patterns out there to make, say, a circle skirt, I find it really interesting how each pattern company has their own way of instructing you how to make a circle skirt. Um, all their instructions vary and hold your hand to some degree. While I've made two different versions of a, a walking skirt, I'm really interested to see how folkwear patterns instructs you to make one, if that makes any sense. So yeah, that's that's something to look out for. If you are into the historical uh, sewing or knitting realm, uh, definitely check that one out. Another thing that I've been super stoked about is CocoVid. And if you're not familiar with what hashtag CocoVid is, as you know, I'm very into historical fashion. And when I hopped on that bandwagon, I fell down the YouTube rabbit hole when it comes to podcasters who, or uh, YouTubers who were creating content around historical fashion. And historical costuming. And there's a little thing called Costume College out in California. If I had to describe what Costume College is, I would say it's pretty much on par with Rhinebeck, but for costume makers. And of course, due to COVID-19, Costume College was canceled, as were many festivals of the like, and CocoVid was their answer to the cancellation of Costume College, essentially. So many of the YouTubers in that community have come together and started doing all of these incredible live streams, uh, just offering uh, these interview panels, uh, giving lectures. Through that, I've just been learning so much and being introduced to so many new uh, YouTubers in that community. And so far, some of my favorite live streams have been, of course, on Bernadette Banner's channel. I mean, who else would, yeah. Kathy Hay gave a lecture on how to make your own Worth dress. Uh, Charles Frederick Worth was a very popular fashion designer back in the, early 1900s, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, and he was pretty much the father of haute couture. And then Bernadette also hosted a panel with uh, fellow YouTubers discussing the ups and downs of starting your own YouTube channel. And through that panel, I discovered a new to me YouTuber, Costuming Drama with Noelle, who hosted her own panel. And that panel spoke to diversity in the costuming community, which was completely enlightening and educational and just a complete eye opener. So I, I will link down below to where you can check these out. Uh, just a disclaimer, 
these live streams are only going to be available for a limited time. If you do happen to catch them, they're so worth it. Uh, they are very long though, I will warn you. They Some of them run from you know an hour and a half to over two and a half hours, but they are just so engaging and so informative and definitely, definitely check it out. And again, links below. So yay, Coco Vid, I'm here for it. I have a funny feeling this is going to be a relatively short favorites episode because I only have two more favorites to share with you and both are photography video related. So I hope you guys are into that. But this is a YouTube channel that I've been subscribed to for quite some time, but over the past month, I've just been binge watching the heck out of it. And that YouTube channel is Becky and Chris. And they are a couple based out in Canada. And <laughs> Becky is actually a full-time YouTuber. She comes from a background of graphic design, photography, and video. And her husband is a actually a full-time doctor. And while they have a YouTube channel together, Becky's the one doing all the video editing, the recording, and they create these beautiful, well-produced vlogs that are just so scenic. And I mean, it, it certainly helps that her husband has a, a helicopter and they fly everywhere around Canada. It's just, I know this has nothing to do with knitting or sewing, but they are partially to blame for this new backdrop. Uh, Becky is also into interior design and just watching her redecorate her recording spaces and everything has definitely inspired me to tackle redecorating my own. And while I was going through my little creative funk, so to speak, I completely binge watched their YouTube channel, shamelessly. And the very last favorite that I have to share with you and slight rabbit hole that I've div divin, dove, divin down, dived, Grammar Kristen. Words, I can't, I just can't. This is a rabbit hole that I dove down pretty hard this past month, and that is double exposure photography. Yeah, where, where does it end? I have no idea, but I discovered this photographer through another YouTuber who is Lizzie Pierce. I know, this is a lot of information, but I watch photography and video YouTube channels on the side of knitting and sewing. So yeah, lots of information, but I was watching Lizzie Pierce's YouTube channel and she had her photographer friend on who is called, let me see, uh, Anna Caitlin. She creates these incredibly beautiful double exposure photos and I was just blown away. I fell down the scroll hole, my friends. It, her photography just speaks to me on so many levels and I was super stoked when I found out she was offering a double exposure photography course. Shut up, take my money, sign, sign me up. That's something that I've also been just kind of dabbling in and having a lot of fun with it. So yeah, I can't wait for COVID to be over so I can just go out into the world and take photos uh, without having to wear a mask or social distance. And yeah, I just, I wanna, I wanna do more of it. It's so much fun, so rewarding. And yeah, it's, I love it. All right, guys, those are my favorites for this month. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Also, what are you into this month? I'm always curious about what my viewers are into. So do let me know in the comments below. And if you're new here, feel free to like and subscribe. I put out two videos for your viewing pleasure every week because I have so much fun doing it. And until the next video, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, and I'll see you next time. Bye.